Hi. So, in today's lecture, we're going to cover first theoretical model of trade. And we're going to start with classical trade theories. And the main uh, feature uh, that drives trade in the theory we're going to discuss today is going to be technology. But before we get right into it, uh, let me just review a couple of th trade theories uh, that came before it. Well, we usually start by the theory created by Mercantilism. This is called Mer. Sorry. Mer uh, Mercantilist view was the view present before 18th century about trade. And here, and the view on, uh, on what to do about trade is very practical. Uh, they see the welfare of a nation depending on how much gold and uh, silver the nation is able to accumulate. So what they were, uh, uh, so what they were advocating is to always run trade surplus, so bigger export than import, to accumulate, uh, accumulate gold from other countries. Well, very soon, uh, this theory, which actually could not be even called a theory, this practical view, uh, was downtrodden simply because if you have too much gold, gold starts to be worth less. And, of course, uh, at this moment we know that the amount of gold or money that you hold is not the best measure of the welfare of a country. The better measure is how much we can produce or how much we can consume. The first, uh, uh, the, the first really, uh, the first uh, model of trade with uh, good theoretical foundation was the model created by Adam Smith And this theory is known as absolute, absolute cost advantage. Well, what Adam Smith said is something that we are accepting as well right now. And the idea was that if a given good can be produced cheaper abroad, then in our country, we should, uh, uh, then we should uh, import this good. And in his famous example with cloth and wine, uh, where England is better at producing cloth and uh, Portugal is better at producing wine, it's beneficial for both of them to specialize in what they are the best and trade in order to obtain what they are not as good at uh, from other countries. So technically speaking, if we have lowered the cost of production, we should export a good. If we have higher uh, cost of production in other countries, uh, uh, we should imp uh, import the good from, from the other countries. Okay, but this would mean if we have a country that has no absolute cost advantage, any in any in production of any good should not be uh, should not be exporting anything. That we should only uh, 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 that this country should be just importing things, not exporting anything. And actually, this view clashes extensively with what we see in the data. Even countries with way worse technology are exporting some goods. And in order to uh, explain that, we actually need to refer to a theory made by David Ricardo. Called comparative 
based on comparative cost advantage. And this theory is what we actually going to start with. We're going to start with this theory uh, because it's the most basic but still relevant theory explaining uh, uh, the nature uh, of, of trade flows we observe in the economy. But look, as I mentioned before, uh, in this class we are not going to be just taking apart some pieces of reality and describing them, but what we want to do in each case is to build a very specific model that will account for everything. And in the future when we will be discussing non-classical trade theory, this model will be very much developed from every perspective. But what we need today is to establish a simple model. We will also discuss it in details. Sometimes you might even think that I'm over explaining some stuff, but it is very important to understand all those concepts properly because only then we will be able to learn the new setting that we're going to introduce later very well. And look, as with every model, we need to start with some set of assumptions. And the model we uh, are going to deal with now. So, comparative cost advantage model based on technology. Uh, first, we will call this 2 by 2 by 1 model. Why this, all of this, uh, it, it, why we call it, is just given in assumptions. So, let's list all those assumptions first, then we will be discussing them uh, a little bit more. Aside. So, in our model, we have two countries two goods and one factor of production, labor within country 
within countries, but perfectly or completely immobile between countries.
assumption of uh, perfect competition uh, concerns both market uh, for goods, as we said, as market uh, for laborers. So, uh, in our case, if we have a perfect competition, then profit function of a company will be given by P times Q, which is total revenue of the company, price at which we sell the good, times quantity we produce, minus total cost, which is C times Q. And look, in this case we can easily take P minus C out of the parentheses multiplied by Q. And look, what does the perfect competition implies? First, if we've got perfect competition, it means that none of the companies control, uh, uh, control the price. So this variable is taken for, by the company as exogenous, as a parameter, to kill the influence. And look, now, because we have also perfect competition in the uh, uh, labor force market, C is also given, so both of those are parameters uh, that this company to take as given. Okay, so look, basically whether the company will have positive, negative or zero profit, remember this is economic profit, so it also takes into consideration opportunity cost, solely depends on the value of these two. Because look, what, uh, what do we see over here? We can have definitely three possible cases. Well, the first case is that P is lower than C. Now, what is the optimal choice in this case? We see that this expression will definitely be negative. So, in order to maximize profit, So, at this moment, 
I think uh, we covered all the assumptions. Uh, so, okay, maybe let's just summarize what we've learned from this. If we have, uh, if we have perfect competition and constant returns to scale, uh, then we can have uh, basically two possibilities. First, we see that the price can be either lower or equal to the cost of production. And uh, what we've got is that if price is lower than uh, uh, the cost of production, you will have Q equal to zero. But we will have also the Q if Q is above zero, then this must imply that price is equal to the unit cost of production. Okay, so those are the basics, basic assumptions of the model. In the next videos, we will be introducing new elements that will allow us to put the entire model together. Okay, see you in the next video.